And today I'm going to be decluttering and reorganizing my small kitchen. So I moved into this apartment about three or four months ago and it is a pretty small kitchen but it is quite good with regards to having quite a bit of storage but I don't find that I utilize the storage the best that it can be. Um, so today the biggest thing that I want to tackle is my fridge and freezer are a total mess. So I wanted to basically take everything out, throw out all the um, old stuff and then just rearrange it really tidily. Um, and then also I have my pantry here, which just over time just gets a bit messy and disorganized. Um, and then under the sink, um, I want to reorganize that space and I've got like all my containers and my Tupperware here. So I wanted to take all that out again and rearrange all that. Um, and then also I've got some empty jars um, and some jars that need labelling. So I thought I would refill all those and show you my labelling system for all my jars and containers. So if you'd like to see how I rearrange and declutter my kitchen, let's get into it. So the first area that I really need to tackle is the freezer and fridge. So as you can see, I do have a lot of frozen goods. Um, it's a combination of like fruit and veggies, like frozen berries that I use in smoothies, um, frozen vegetables, which I like to use in stir fries and things, um, as well as like leftovers. Um, and I like to, yeah, basically freeze a lot of stuff so that I have, you know, leftover food. Oh, oh. I like to freeze a lot of stuff just so that I have things on hand, um, just so that I'm not tempted to buy takeout and things all the time. And then the next section is, of course, the fridge. And I have a big focus this year on saving money, which means that I'm trying not to buy takeout very often, which means that I cook a lot at home. And again, just over time, my fridge has become quite cluttered. And it's just a case of going through the fridge and freezer and just making sure that, you know, anything past its use by date gets thrown out. And then just rearranging everything and putting it back in um, so that it is, kind of a lot more organized and I can see what I have on hand a lot easier. I'm sick of daydreaming, I just want the feeling of you in my bed. So now that is all clean, um, we can start putting things back in and I thought I'd take you through like what I like to buy and also keep in the freezer as well um, as a way of saving money as well. So um, this is ham, not for me, I don't eat meat, but um, for my dog Milan, um, these are for his um, slow feeding toys. So um, I like to buy things in bulk because I get paid monthly, which just means that it's a little bit easier to kind of manage my budget when I know exactly what I am buying at the start of the month or when I get paid. Um, and then things like flour, um, I also <laughs> buy in bulk um, just when I get paid as well. Um, I seem to have bought like two stuff rising flowers, which I don't really need um, right now, but um, I keep them in the freezer because um, otherwise they do kind of get uh, weevils in them and also keeping them in the freezer um, just I think kills the weevils like that get in the glue of the paper bags so I like to keep it in here and that just means that um, I can refill the containers in my pantry when I run out and I always have flour on hand. Um, next I have some frozen meals so again when I got paid um, I stocked up on like veggies like zucchini, mushrooms and I think eggplant and I just made a bolognese sauce so I made three meals out of that and it just means that if I have a really busy day or towards the end of the month when I'm kind of running out of kitchen staples it just means that I have um, food on hand and I don't need to order takeaways. 
here I have some chopped up chicken breast frozen in little portions. So this is for my dog Milan. Um, these are the meals that he has. Um, so I'll defrost them. Probably have to use about two portions per week. But again, I just like to stock up on um, chicken breast. I buy about like two to two and a half kilos of chicken breast. And then I'll cut it up into little pieces and then group them in little portions and then freeze them. And again, it just means that I'm not having to buy chicken every week, like every weekend that I go to the supermarket. And it also means that um, I don't have to like touch the chicken uh, all the time. It just means I can do it once a month and then he's all set um, for the month. Next we have frozen veggies. Um, these are super cheap and they really go um, well in things like stir fry, so I always like to have those. Um, same with these little peas, corn and carrot. Next I have frozen mango and frozen berries and these go really great in smoothies. And I also found like a whole bunch of like old kind of gross stuff. So um, I had some leftover chocolate cake. I think I'm gonna throw that out. That doesn't look so good. Um, I had, I got given like a whole box of donuts for my birthday, um, which I couldn't really finish all by myself. So I ended up freezing them. Um, they actually kept quite well. So I think I'll defrost that and have that as a snack today. Um, I had some like gingerbread cookies that I froze just before Christmas. Um, so I think I'll take those out and like bake them because they're taking up a lot of space in the freezer and they're probably not going to be very good for much longer. So um, I'm just trying to free up some space as well. Um, I have this dairy free ice cream um, which I will keep so I can maybe keep that in the back. And then if you've watched my Saturday vlog um, where just before Easter um, or during Easter I stocked up on hot cross buns so um, I've got like three packets of hot cross buns to get through and then I've got a packet of french fries um, I love hot chips so I always have to have these in the freezer and it's kind of dangerous because now that I have an air fryer, it's even quicker and easier to make them. So um, it's a little bit dangerous having them in the freezer, but oh, they're just so good. Um, this is some vegetable stock that I made. Um, so I made like a broth the other week um, and I just like to freeze, you know, about a liter of the leftover broth to make um, vegetable stock which can be used in like pasta dishes and uh, soups and stuff in the future. Um, so every time I do that, I like to keep at least a liter of that for use in the future. And then last weekend I was really craving cupcakes and so I decided to make some cupcakes for myself. Um, I live by myself so um, I couldn't exactly eat them all. I mean I could but I didn't want to eat them all myself so I ended up um, just freezing a couple. Um, so those can be you know snacks or desserts in the future. Um, and then this coming week I'm going to make, well I was going to make burgers for dinner but instead of using burger buns um, I found these pita breads in my local like gourmet supermarket. So they were $3 down from like five or $6. So I just put them in the freezer and I can defrost them um, come Monday. what I haven't allowed room for is like all of my ice 
ice cube trays. So I'm going to have to rearrange that a little bit. already looking so much better just by getting rid of all of the old stuff that's no longer good and then also just kind of stacking things a little bit neatly because I think on, on like I think day to day you kind of just end up chucking things wherever it fits but it's not until you kind of empty everything out and rearrange things that um, starts to look Ooh. everything looks a little bit tidier and the last thing is this garlic bread, which I bought in anticipation of a dinner that I'm hosting. So, um, yeah, that can just go where it can fit because it's kind of only temporary. But otherwise, I think it looks a lot tidier. And, yeah, just making sure that everything is kind of got its own spot, but then also getting rid of all of the stuff that's kind of gone off or doesn't, um, you know isn't going to be eaten um, anymore is pretty important. So yeah, feeling good. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline. Want you by my head. I'm doing all this face time, need some alone time, baby. You're always running in my mind. I'm sick of daydreaming, I just want to feel. Are looking a lot tidier a lot cleaner um, I didn't empty out the fresh bin because I just did that recently so that's already pretty clean um, just gave all the shelves a wipe down um, and then just got rid of stuff that's no longer um, edible so I think yeah again very happy with that um, and it's time to move on to the pantry so I'm going to try and capture this as best as I can but this pantry um, it's supposed to pull out quite a little bit further, but because the shelves and everything are so heavy that the ball bearings on the bracket are kind of broken. So when I first moved in, it was kind of like this as well, but the handyman came to fix it and it was fixed for a little bit, but I just don't think it's designed to have like so much stuff on it. Um, and this kind of weight. So again, I've had to compromise a little bit because it just doesn't pull out any further um, Which means I mean it's a little bit annoying having to grab things like this, but um, It's still pretty good in terms of storage like I don't need Any extra space I don't feel but it's more just like a little bit annoying having to like grab things and you end up having to go from like one side to the other um, but again, I think what I'll do is just take everything out um, and if there's anything that I no longer use or has gone off, um, I'll throw that out. Um, and then after that, I will show you how I label all of my jars and my containers. I'm doing all this face time, need some alone time, baby. So I like to use a combination of different jars and things to store all my um, ingredients. So I bought these plain jars, um, I think this is like a 500ml jar, and then also these 1 litre jars, um, and again just like very plain, um, and then I've just labelled them myself. And the reason why I chose to do that is because um, I just, I think that jars like this will always be able to be purchased whereas i see a lot of beautifully styled pantries like beautifully organized pantries but the containers that they use are like specific brands and you might get them from kmart or you might get them from like brands like sistema and things like that um, but the thing is they might discontinue those jars or those containers 
and I just think in the future if you wanted to buy extra to you know put in your pantry or you might need to replace broken ones or you might have more ingredients that you need to um, stock up in the pantry for um, the containers might not necessarily be in stock anymore so then you have like mismatched containers um, whereas I find that if you use things like mason jars or um, just these like canning jars like this um, it just means that you know they'll always be available to be replaced or buy extra ones of them that being said I like to keep I'm like a jar hoarder so these jars um, I thought were really nice and a good size um, and they're just from those powdered PB2 um, powdered peanut butter um, things that I used to buy all the time things like jam jars I love these ones they're so cute um, so I always keep these as well and they're really great for storing um, ingredients too so for larger things that I like to keep in bulk um, I have these one liter jars as I said before um, and then I've got these tall con um, containers and I keep things like pasta um, in that um, and again, I think like in terms of labeling, I'll show you the label maker that I use, but I think something like this is actually a lot more convenient because unless you have a Cricut to print these and make these sorts of bespoke labels yourself, um, if you order them online, it's just like not that convenient to create new labels. So they end up being mismatched. Um, I use these cereal containers to store rice in because again I like to buy things in bulk so I buy like a five kilo bag of rice and then I decant them into these um, containers which make it really easy to pour like straight into the rice cooker. And then for things like brown sugar and flour um, I like to use these containers from IKEA. Um, just because they are really easy to stack um, if you need and also I like that the um, opening of the container is large enough that you can put like your cup into it your measuring cup into it um, to measure things so I like to use these containers so I'm not mad that like the containers and jars don't necessarily match I'm more just like mad that the labels don't really match so I think I mean obviously I could get rid of these and just replace it with the um, the Dymo labels but um, I'm okay with them um, as they are at the moment Before I put everything back in the pantry, I just need to refill a few jars. Um, and if you're anything like me, <laughs> you love watching people refill stuff, it's just a satisfying um, video. There's those people who like refill things on TikTok, like their fridges and um, their pantries and stuff, um, which I find very satisfying. But at the time, I but at the same time, I just think it's a little bit unnecessary sometimes to like transfer, like something from one plastic container to the next but at the same time I get that people want their pantries and fridges to be super organized so I get it um, but I don't like to go over the top like even the freezer when I was planning to redo that um, there was a part of me that was like okay I'm gonna go to Kmart and buy some extra um, containers just so that I can film myself filling up um, these containers with like, like I wanted to decant the frozen berries and the um, like Milan's chicken, I wanted to have that in a separate container and stuff. Um, but then I just realized actually my system at the moment works just fine. It's more just that it gets It's more that it just gets messy over time. So periodically, you just need to do a clear out as I am today. Um, but I just think it's not necessary to go out and buy more stuff just so that you have an aesthetic looking freezer. Like I don't think that's necessary, but I think what is necessary is um, cleaning it out periodically, like every couple of months making sure you go through everything and um, clearing out all the stuff that's gone off. So 
So if you saw me <laughs> just pouring that in, that was couscous. And then we've got chia seeds. Which I know is not as those clean chalk people call filtastic, but chia seeds are expensive. So I just got a small packet and it only comes up to here on the jar. Um, next we have cranberries and the reason why I stocked up on these is because it's coming into winter now, which means that I will be making oats or porridge for breakfast and I find that cranberries cooked in the oats while you're cooking it is just super delish. Next we have coconut and this could go horribly wrong also. So the reason I have a large jar is because I bought such a big packet of desiccated coconut and I like to use it quite regularly so I don't want to be pouring from this massive jar all the time. I want to have a small jar that I can easily access and then fill it up when I need to. Milan. And then lastly, okay, this is a bit naughty, but I kind of have a slight lolly addiction or candy addiction at the moment. Um, and my faves are Sour Patch Kids. Um, I just found out that these raspberry twists are vegan as well. So, I bought those. And these are just old peanut butter jars. So there we have it. And this is the Dymo label maker that I use. I just bought it on Amazon. You can link it below. And as I said, I think it's just easy um, to have a label maker like that on hand rather than, you know, if you don't have a Cricut and you can't make these bespoke labels yourself, I think it's really good to have something like this. Um, to be able to make your labels yourself. Just made a label for my almonds.
So I like to order things in a way that makes it really easy to grab the things that I use regularly. So on this top shelf, we've got my better fiber, um, spreads. Um, the next shelf down, I've got couscous. And so at the back are things that I wouldn't use as often. So buckwheat flour and chickpea flour. I don't really reach for those very often. Um, and then we move on to this shelf, which I would probably use these two shelves the most. So here we've got hemp seeds and sunflower seeds. And I use these on my lunches, on my salads quite often. So um, always good to have them um, at an easy to reach area. Um, these need to be refilled, but uh, I've got white chocolate chips and dark chocolate chips. And these I use in my pancakes and I have pancakes like every weekend. So again, just good to have those um, easy to access. And same with these sugar-free maple syrup and golden syrup, they're used for pancakes. Um, clearly pancakes, very important to me. So um, have these very easy to grab. Um, everything but the bagel seasoning um, and my uh, vegan chicken salt. Um, again, just the stuff that I would grab the most often, whereas the stuff at the back, um, it's still stuff that I use, but less so. And then down here, um, I've got this stuff, it's called Love Your Guts, which is again a gut health product, um, similar to Benefiber. Um, so I like to have that quite um, easy to grab. In the back here, we've got um, my two flowers, so plain flour and stuff raising flour and then brown sugar. Um, I would grab them from the other side though. Um, and then we've got cranberries and almonds. So as I said before, these will be used um, on top of my oats or my porridge every morning. So again, just wanted to have them um, easy to grab. And then in the back here, some seeds and nuts, um, chia seeds, baking powder. And then the bottom here, we have um, the rice, in those cereal canisters that I was talking to you about and and um, I've got my sushi nori and my rice paper wraps. It's not necessarily the most, you know, aesthetic pantry um, on YouTube. But what I like about it is that I am utilizing the space in the best way that I can. And I think like the, the jars that I've chosen and the way that I organize it is highly practical. So it's not necessarily about looking good, but it also has to be highly functional. So I really like it. And then last of all of the sections that I want to tackle today is this mess under my sink. So on the left there, I have my slow cooker which is pretty big so that takes up a lot of the room and then i have all my containers so basically i think i just need to uh, take out all the containers and rearrange those and then also all my cleaning products and stuff um just rearrange those um and basically just give it a good tidy up can't spend time alone give you my hoodie just so you can smell my cologne so there we have it again not the most like glamorous area but i think the only way to really keep your um, containers organized is to again periodically take everything out and rearrange them um, i like to keep like the same size containers together with their lids and quite often um, if you have the space i guess i would keep the containers with their lids on them um, otherwise I find that's when you get um, you lose the lids and everything gets all disorganized so if you have the space rather than stacking them like with the bases all together and with the lids all together um, try and just have the bases with the lids and then stack them but I understand that that takes up a lot of space and then on this section um, so I have like a tray that was previously at my old apartment um, the black tray, it was part of um, like, you know, a dish, what do you call them? Like a dish, a dish drying <laughs> tray. And I just use that under the sink now to um, hold all my um, cleaning products. And then above it, um, I have my barkeeper's friend, which is really good for like cleaning stuff. Um, it's a bit like, uh, if you know what Jif is, it's kind of like the powdered version of that and you just mix it with water. 
and all those cleaning moms on Facebook love it also. But what I don't like is this, it doesn't come with like a lid, so you have to put like cling wrap over the, the top, um, which isn't great, but um, the product itself is pretty good. And then um, in here, I have my little cloths, my cleaning cloths, and then in these two, um, I have my little clips that I use for all of my um, open bags. So I love this little caddy. Um, this is from Kmart. Um, I'm not sure if they still sell it, but yeah, it's super cute. So I really like this area. Again, I have my um, products that I use most frequently at the front or like directly under the sink. Um, and everything else is kind of at the back. So all of the stuff that I use to refill um, these spray bottles and um, stuff that I would use every week, but not necessarily every day. So yeah, this section is nice and tidy as well. And I think what I love about um, kind of cleaning these areas periodically is that you discover how much space you actually have. So I can't really complain about not having any storage space when in fact, there is quite a lot of storage space. It's just a matter of keeping it tidy. Thank you so much for joining me today as I reorganized and decluttered my kitchen. If you liked any of the tips, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more cleaning and productivity videos. Um, I am trying to think of what I can film next. It'll probably be a winter cleaning and winter kind of changeover video. So stay tuned for that. And I hope that you are inspired to declutter your kitchen as well, no matter what the size, whether it's big or small like mine. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time.